England against Italy, folks. Six Nations 2023. Both these teams lost last week. Uh, but Italy has never beaten England. So on paper, this looks like a chance for England to get their campaign righted and back underway. And if history proves true, Italy uh, will probably get pretty well beaten. But Italy were pretty decent against a good French side last week. And it's another new game, so you can take the history with whatever level of regard you wish. But anyway, we're going to go through the lineups, some stats, some predictions, the recent history, and you guys can let us know your thoughts. Um, yeah, England last, last week against Scotland in what was one of the best games of, of recent memory. Honestly, I know England fans may not look at it that fondly given the result, but geez, it was a good game. There was some real highlight level moments in that game, not just Duan van der Merwe's try as well, there was some proper skill, Max Malins' first try was a thing of beauty as well, um, but yeah, there was there was certainly a lot of good moments, and um, I don't think, given that it was a first performance for Steve Borthwick's boys, I don't think it's, uh, you know, too bad. Obviously, they would like to convert more on some of the possession and territory they had, but there's stuff to build on anyway. Now, they have made a fair few changes, the uh, the English management, and uh, I would say it's kind of a similar level to what Gats has done with Wales. Most of the sides, Italy and France and Ireland and whatnot, Scotland have gone with pretty much the consistency approach. England has not wholesale changes, but they've certainly made some key changes, and they've got a couple of key guys back from injury. So Genge, George, and Sinclair, that's the same front row as last week, so they kind of continue on. Uh, Genji was pretty impressive with his carries. Uh, didn't give away a lot in the way of penalties, which is a good thing because that's something he certainly in 2022 got punished with a heck of a lot. Uh, Mara Toje and Oli Chisholm continue on the second row. I thought Chisholm was really good last week. So I look forward to seeing more of him, uh, you know, um, locking for England along with Mara Toje. I think they complement each other pretty well. And Ludlam, Willis and Don Brandt are the back row. So Ben Curry, a couple of days ago, was released from the the squad so we knew he wasn't going to be playing uh this week and uh, sure enough jack willis comes in from outside the 23 and um yeah i guess we can expect him to try and disrupt what the italians were doing at the breakdown and given the way the french got punished at the breakdown uh it may be an area where the english guys are going to have to be pretty sharp because the italians had a really great rock completion rate so um yeah that's the back row so just the just the one change in the forward pack and the uh the forward replacements are uh, all pretty much the same. So it's just Ben Curry who's the one who um, who gets the cut. Uh, for the back, so there's a few more changes. Van Portfleet and Farrell is the 19 combo. So for the first time in a wee while, we don't see Marcus Smith at 10, although he is still in the squad on the bench. And of course, the press made a big deal about this in the press conference. It was pretty much, I think, the first question that Steve Borthwick got asked. Like, is that for Marcus Smith? Is this done? Like... They seem to take any one change, like the way the, the Welsh press did it as well when Alan Wynne Jones got dropped. Like, essentially, is he done? Is that it for his career? Steve Borthwick's like, no, this is just one game. We don't plan too far ahead, which you can either look at as a good thing or a bit concerning that he doesn't go too long term. He basically sets his team up, according to him, uh, to play the team that he's going to face this week. So he thinks. Van Portfleet at Farrell at 9 and 10 is going to work better than uh, than having Marcus Smith and Farrell 10, 12 along with Van Portfleet at 9. So that's that's the the official explanation behind it. It's not that we've seen the last of Smith and Farrell. So Farrell's at 10. And from what I've seen of him playing at Saris this year, I don't think that's a bad thing. So we'll see how he goes. Ollie Lawrence, I'm super pleased for him to be at 12. Big blockbusting ball carry. I've seen him play for Bath. And he's a handful, so yes, I really want to see that guy busting some tackles because that's what he does best. I was a little bit disappointed he didn't get off the bench a little bit earlier last week. Henry Slade is also back fit. He's at 13, so I guess uh, with him there, you've kind of got another playmaking option at 13 as well because he's got a pretty all-round skill set. Uh, Malins is still on the right wing after his two tries last week. Hassel Collins retains his spot. And uh, Freddie Stewart is still there at the back as well. There are a lot more changes in the reserves, though, because um, for, for the backs, anyway, Alex Mitchell comes in for Ben Youngs. Again, his career is not done, despite what the journalists are trying to probe at. Uh, they just want something else for this week. Marcus Smith's down to the bench, and Henry Arundel is back from injury. So uh, we've seen what that guy can do in England colours before when he's come off the bench. So it'll be curious to see how many minutes he is able to get. Should say, if you want England rugby gear, check out England rugby store down in the description. They're always doing 
sales and whatnot. I would have thought after last week having a loss, they should do the sale a little bit higher. You know, a little bit more of a discount, but I don't know. Check it out and see how they're going. Uh, for the Italians, as I mentioned, a lot more consistent. And um, there's a couple of big names that are back in the squad. Fischetti, Nicotera, and Riccioni. Uh, that's your front row. So having Riccioni back at tight head is massive. I thought they might have shoved him in a week earlier, but they, they gave him an extra week's prep because they said he'd been out of the squad for so long. Uh, they wanted to get him kind of eased back into the Italian setup. Uh, he's, he's great. England fans will know all about him because he's playing his rugby in England now. So, yeah, he's going to have a really good battle against Alice Genge. Canone and Ruzza, that's the same lock and duo as last week. I thought they were both really impressive. Canone is a big physical guy. Uh, Ruzza took a fair bit of line out ball from memory. So, yeah, very, very pleasing for them to continue on. Negri Lamaro and Canone. Uh, same back row as last week, so yeah, I think they were all pretty busy. And remember, they play a 6-2 split, so these guys are able to kind of go gangbusters and then, um, yeah, just have a rest when they're out of gas, basically. Uh, Vani continues on at 9. There was a little bit of criticism of him uh, last week for, you know, potentially costing the Italians a few points. And Kieran Crowley did say in the pre-match stuff that, you know, they were inaccurate in the first 20, which is kind of putting it pretty mildly. They were, they were pretty poor. They, they gifted the French a big lead in that game, which ended up costing them when you consider how, how close it was. Tommaso Allen as well uh, copped a little bit of stick. Some of his kicking for touch was certainly not as uh, pinpoint as it could have been. They maybe miss a little bit of the, uh, the spark that Garbisi can offer when he's playing at 10, but... For mine, the number one thing and controllable thing is his kicking for touch. He needs to get better distance uh, on those kicks. He got one real peach of a kick, but a lot of them were, were kind of pretty ordinary. So he's going to need every inch against England. So we'll see how he does. Maurice and Brex is the same midfield. Menicello and Padovani has one change. So Padovani is coming up from the bench to play on the wing ahead of Bruno, who is down to the bench. And Capuozzo, who scored that great try uh, for the Italians, is still there at fullback. So... It's an interesting one with the Italians. They scored both their tries from kind of malls last week, right? One mall, they set up Capuoto to go left, and the other mall was kind of a penalty try. So that's going to be an area of interest against England anyway. Uh, for the bench, Bigi Zani and Ferrari drops to the bench. So with Ferrari's dropping to the bench, otherwise everything's the same. Uh, yeah, Kizzi is still there, and then Jake Poledri is back. Jeez, that guy hasn't played much rugby. He used to be, I think... Maybe when I first watched the Six Nations in, I want to say 2019, when I watched like every game, I swear, Pelletri was Italy's best player pretty easily. Like, he looked like he could slot into any number of Tier 1 teams. But then he got that horrendous injury, and he's just not played any rugby. So, how many minutes does he get? What kind of form is he in? I don't know. But we know he's done it in the past, but it's a long time ago. Uh, Zuliani's still there. Fusco is there. And as I mentioned, Bruno drops to the bench so yeah those are the two lineups for for this week only a few changes uh and good changes i think for the italians and a little bit of a change of tact from the english uh for the stats stuff i mean i wrote no soft tries for for the italians and i just mentioned kieran crowley mentioned that inaccuracy in the first 20 uh but the penalty count was seven conceded by the italians 18 by the french so the italians had a lot of opportunities to get themselves kind of free territory or free points from that inaccuracy by the French at the breakdown and whatnot. So they might not get that kind of same uh, lopsided count against England. So you can't be relying on that. I don't think that's the kind of thing that's going to happen two weeks in a row. But the Italians, I should say, do have pretty good discipline numbers generally. Um, but man, they tackled at 77%. They missed a lot of tackles on their French counterparts. And that's something they will definitely need to be better uh, away from home like it's all been talked up how close that game was but yeah defensively the Italians need to up their game but so do the English I mean 80% is not much better like super rugby teams aim for probably like 80% in terms of the tackling percentage so missed tackle count way too high for the English it was pretty uh, it was pretty obvious um, you know with with the Duan van der Merwe try and whatnot so yeah that's that's definitely and that came up in the press conference as well it's going to be an area of concern uh and also England had the least clean breaks of all the teams last week despite having a huge amount of possession and territory yeah it's uh, I mean it speaks to the Scottish defense but it's a little bit concerning that they had all that ball 
and weren't able to easily generate kind of clean attacking opportunities. Like they had two. I think most of the teams had like six. Four of the teams I think had six. One of them had three. So yeah, a little bit concerning. Um, missed tackles. I mean, individuals. Farrell missed three. Uh, Marcus Smith missed two. Ben Curry missed four. Malins missed four. So Ben Curry is out the side. Smith's on the bench. So maybe that's a direct result of some missed tackles. I don't know. But um, Malins and Farrell still keep starting spots. And they missed among the most of all of them. But um, yeah, recent history between the sides is lopsided. The Italians have never beaten the English. So, or should I say England? I forget which one I should go with. Someone mentioned it on Twitter to me the other day. Uh, yeah, Italy's never beaten England. England's recent record is 5-0. Their overall record is complete success. So, a lot of people are talking up Italy's chances. Recent history would tell you no. Uh, you know, 33 nil last year, 41 18, 34 5, 37 nil, 57 14. The average score is 40 points to 7. These are usually hidings, but I mean, Italy didn't get a hiding last week. So we will see if the Italians are able to make it a competitive one. Predictions wise, they are not predicted to make it competitive. They got a 19 point deficit with the bookie, so England 19 point favourites. And then the rugby forecast algorithm says. 28 so even a step further uh it is on a twickenham it's 3 p.m local time which is 4 a.m for those of us here in new zealand which is not the ideal time but we'll we'll deal with it uh james dolman from new zealand is the referee uh it is on itv for you guys in the uk rt for you guys in ireland if you want to watch outside of free to air territories you can use a vpn to watch these six nations games live or on demand i will put a link down in the description to express Connect to UK server, go to ITV, watch game. Pretty, pretty simple stuff. Uh, you'd have to log in, but um, yeah, otherwise pretty straightforward. So yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts. How do you reckon Italy are going to go with an away trip to Twickenham? Do you give them a genuine chance? Or do you think, um, you know, the, the recent record of England generally giving Italy a bit of a hiding is going to continue? And um, yes, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.